Hey everyone, this is Jennifer with Nookalico Creations. I know it's been a while. I apologize, life got away from me, but I'm going to be posting more regularly from now on, I promise. For today, I want to show you this super quick and easy storyboard tumbler. But what's really cool is this is a new kind of storyboard. It's a 20 ounce straight sublimatable storyboard. It's got the features of both a snow globe and a storyboard. So let's get into it. All right. Here's the inside shell of the storyboard. And I've got my sublimatable design. I'm wrapping it around that base. And you wanna pull that really tight. I take a piece of heat tape, put it in the center there to kind of hold it so that I don't lose any ground with the tension. And then as I go, I'm just gonna put a few more pieces of tape, pulling that paper together, kind of pinching it together to the best of my ability. And once I get a couple of pieces of tape there on the seam, I go in with a longer piece of tape and I put it over that seam. It just keeps those areas in between the pieces of tape from puckering up at all. Then I'm gonna take another piece of tape and I'm gonna wrap it around the base, right at the bottom there, and I'm gonna pull kind of tight on the tape as I go. Now if your paper puckers, then you've got your design too loose on the cup and you need to start over, okay? but. I just pull real tight around and run it around the bottom. And then I'm gonna do the same for the top. Now, I am by no means a pro at sublimation. I've been doing it for a little while. I've done, you know, a few pieces. It's not consistent for me. This is the system that works for me and helps prevent ghosting. Uh, but if you have another way to do it, by all means, you do you, boo. All right, now I'm gonna put that in my tumbler press. I'm gonna run it. I 375 degrees for 60 seconds, four times. So I'm going to put it in there, turn it a quarter, put it in there, turn it a quarter, and do that two more times. Now I'm gonna let it cool. I'm gonna take the paper off. Now I am mixing 10 milliliters of epoxy. Now I use Speed Dry by Mr. Nola's Glitter. It is my favorite epoxy. And I'm just gonna pour that in that lip. Now unlike the traditional storyboards, that lip is really big. I mean, you can see on the camera. So pouring the epoxy in, man, it is just so much easier. You can see exactly where there's any gaps. But you pour the epoxy in, I set it down, let the epoxy level out, make sure that there's no gaps in coverage there. And then obviously I'm gonna clean up my mess because I spilled some. And then you just take the acrylic shell that comes with the cup and place it right into that lip. And it's so easy. I let that sit and cure for about three hours. Now I'm gonna take my solution and pour just a couple of inches worth in there and let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure that my seal is good there. Once I know the seal is good, I go in and I put more of my solution in. I run it to about three quarters full, give or take. The solution that I use is three quarters distilled water or saline contact solution and about a quarter vegetable glycerin. So if you've ever done a snow globe, then you know that there's this tiny little hole and you gotta put tape around the edge and while they come out beautiful, they're kind of a pain, right? Well, this acrylic shell, this bottom to this cup, has a lip already there and a really big hole. So you can use a funnel if you want to, but I really wanted to show everybody uh, how to do it kind of snow globe style. So I just pour some of the glitter in. This was Green Apple by Bougie Glitter Boutique. And you just push the glitter into the hole. And it's just that quick, that easy. Uh, it may get a little caked up there uh, at the hole, just underneath it. So you give it a little tap and it'll release what's hanging out there and you'll have plenty of room to put more. The next color is also a bougie glitter boutique. I forgot to show the camera. I think it's called Moonlit. It's got a really pretty bluish, purpley silver. I thought that would go good in this cup, so. But again, just boom, push that glitter in. Super quick, super easy. Blue Butterfly by the Drunk Flamingo is absolutely gorgeous. It's this 
purpley blue fine. Now, fines in storyboards can be a little tricky. Um, they can clump up if you're not careful and depending on the kind of mixture you have. So be careful with that. I try not to add too much. I got a little carried away with it this time because that color is so beautiful. But, um, I mean, you can use fine glitters just be more on the conservative side, otherwise it can take over your whole solution and clump up. But just push that in through the hole, give it a few taps. I'm trying to get it down out of the way so I can see how much is actually in there, so I'm shaking it around in the solution. This way I can tell if I added too much, too little, that kind of thing. The next color is, uh, the next glitter is Harry by Mr. Nola's Glitter, and this is, I don't know if it's considered holographic or iridescent, I have no idea, but it's an absolutely gorgeous chunky mix. It's kind of one of my go-tos. You see how easy? Big old chunks just right down in there. So you see what I mean? This storyboard, it's still a storyboard. It comes apart, but it's only the two pieces plus the lid instead of the, the three pieces. There's no gluing the bottom on, no silicone. And as far as snow globes go, it's just, the hole is just so much bigger and the lip already being there, it just cuts out all that hassle. I like to dust off the glitter. When filling up the rest of the way, tilt it to the the bubble is by the hole and then just fill the fluid and I like to overflow it a little bit just to make sure I've got all the air out and then dry that off and clear away any glitter that might be there And then you're gonna wanna get some alcohol on your paper towel and wipe away any of the residue from the vegetable glycerin because that can interfere with your UV resin. Now I'm using Paduo, which is UV resin from Amazon. It works incredibly well. And I'm just gonna line around that hole a little bit with the UV resin. And that's a piece of acetate that I cut out, which I got that acetate from a shaker mold kit that I bought from Amazon. So I just cut a piece, put it on the hole. Be sure to push that down and position it Make sure you've got all the air out from underneath it. Run it under your UV light. I did 30 seconds, which worked perfectly for me. Now, I can never read the numbers on these measuring cups, but it was the second line, the second little line. I just filled up the UV resin there and I am adding uh, peach from Mr. Nola's Glitter into that resin. I'm gonna stir it up and I'm gonna use that for the butt. Just mix it up good. And then put it in the bottom of the cup. And like a big dummy, I completely forgot where the camera was and didn't realize that my hand was blocking your view. So I apologize for that. But all I'm doing is emptying the cup and putting that resin into the bottom of the cup. See? And then you're just gonna spread that out. Kind of like spreading icing on a cake. Spread it out nice and even and all the way up to your edges. And once you get that done, I usually do a very, very quick, low flame, very quick run of my torch over it. But this shell is acrylic, so be careful, you don't want to melt that, right? Uh, but this time I actually forgot, and it turned out just fine, so it doesn't matter. But get that spread out, nice and thin, nice and even if you get any on the edges. Get you a baby wipe or paper towel with alcohol in it, just clean that edge. I ran it for 60 seconds under the UV light. And here you go. Technically, your cup is done. It's beautiful, it's colorful, it's sparkly. Technically, you could be done right here. And you've got maybe three and a half hours in it. Okay, but I really hate having a silver top. So I'm getting my ultimate guide tool from Cami Page Boutique. And I'm using the vertical decal alignment part I forgot the exact name of it to get a straight line and I have the perfect vinyls so I'm not glittering or anything like that I wanted this to be a quick design so I actually used my hand cutter and just eyeballed it and cut this strip of vinyl but I'm lining it up to that mark on my tumbler and I'm just gonna run that vinyl now I'm also using 
the Cami Page cup holder. Um, I think that's what it's called, just cup holder. Uh, but I love this thing. It's small, it holds every size cup really well, but it makes doing things like vinyl wraps and things like this, you know, pinstriping, that kind of thing, so fast. So I get the blue on there nice and straight, and now I've got my purple, which is gorgeous. I love this vinyl. I line it up with that straight edge, that same straight edge, and I'm just running it down the center. You see that color on that purple vinyl? It's throwing the same color blue. I just, I love it. I love this combination. No waiting for anything to dry or anything like that. Again, I was going for quick and pretty. And here's where I remembered I forgot to cut the seam. Uh, I had my vinyl overlapping and didn't get rid of the extra, so I'm just trimming down the middle in between the two ends to create a seam that's basically in line with the seam from the sublimation and getting rid of the extra pieces of vinyl, lining it back up perfectly, and now you've got a perfect seam. Now, I was going to put gold in between that purple, but then I decided I didn't like that, so I got my thinner gold nail tape and I'm running it along the edge of, um, of the purple vinyl. It just, it needed more definition. It didn't feel quite finished yet. But I really like the way lining the purple looked with this gold finishing tape, or nail tape, whatever you want to call it. But because everything is nice and straight and I'm in my cup holder, it just, I get to spin the cup nice and easy, and this is just a breeze of a job. I'm going to do the other side of the purple. Now here in a second you'll see where, uh, after I trim and, and get my seams done right for this, I'm going to stop. And I thought I was done, but I got to looking at it, and so later I decide to add more gold, this time on the edges of the blue, uh, which you'll see at the end. but. It's going to look like I'm going to stop after the purple, but I don't, because I'm extra. I have to be extra. But you just do your seams the same way. You cut in between the two ends to create the perfect straight meetup. All right? You just remove the excess. And in the process, I realized that it was just like a micron too short. So I just lifted it, pulled it a little bit because it's stretchy, and set it down, and it met up perfectly. See, it looks good, but it just looked undone to me. So you'll see where I put the gold around the blue at the top, and then I decided to add the same design to the bottom. And here you go, a coat of epoxy later, and it's done. So there's, I don't know, with curing time, six hours in this cup. You can probably get away with less if you did less. I just, I'm floored by how much fun and how easy these cups are to use. It's like a snow globe and a storyboard had a baby. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and enjoyed these new cups as much as I do. I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to check out the links in the description. I'd love to see you over in my Facebook group. Not only do I have some discount codes for you to save some money on glitter and tools, but I also have a pre-order form for these storyboards. So pop on over there. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have, and I will see you next time.